Welcome back, Saiyans, to another Dragon Ball video here with Chris from CTJ the Saiyan Elites, bringing you guys another deck profile video. Been posting a lot of these lately. Um, been just creating a lot of different deck ideas, and I'm just finding a lot of things that are just really fun to play, and some of them actually could end up being competitive in some sort of sense. Um, same thing with this new deck. Um, actually, going to be working with the Kid Q Leader, which is a first for this channel. Uh, let me know what you guys think of the deck profile. I will leave a deck listing down below. Like and subscribe, hit that bell for all the notifications. Um, that way you guys can stay up to date with all of our content. So what this leader does, this is, um, I haven't really played this leader too much. And I found an archetype that I really enjoy with, with this leader. And it, it revolves around the maidens, using the maidens. Um, you probably will see a lot of maidens in a lot of my off, off decks. Um, just because I really like the green archetype with them. Love hand destruction and just love using a lot of the green cards. And I think this deck utilizes that very, very well. Uh, and giving it a very strong draw engine, considering Piccolo is no longer a thing. Um, trying to find decks that have very, very good draw engines uh, just seems to be something that I'm, you know, searching for. What the figure does um, on the front side, uh, he doesn't draw from attacking, he draws from showing a, uh, from basically having four star balls in his hand. Um, so basically on your, on your non-awakened side, you can reveal a four star ball in your hand. Uh, if you do, you draw a card and then your leader gets 5k for the turn. So it becomes a 15k. It's great. Um, if you have a skillless battle card in your drop area, that's kind of one of the biggest things about this deck is you're playing around skillless. You can, uh, awaken at six life, which your awaken is a draw one, untap one. Pretty, pretty standard. On this side, um... Same effect for the revealing a ball, but instead now you draw two and you pitch one. Um, and then once per turn, when you, you can combo with a skillless card and then you basically it becomes a free 10k combo. Now, something that I did learn from playing is that what you want to do is before you awaken, if you can awaken obviously on your turn, you want to reveal a ball, draw a card, get 5k, awaken. And now I believe you become a 20k because you do carry power over. Um, yeah, it gives you 5k to your power for the turn, so you do become a 20k. Uh, and then you can reveal a ball again on this side, since it's a different ability, draw two, pitch one. So you get to draw basically three cards in one turn, or four cards in one turn, considering the game mechanic as well. Um, yeah, so it's a very, very, you know, your awakened, your awakened turn is, can be very, very strong if you get to dictate it. Um, so we'll get here into the deck profile. So things, if you've never played Kiku before, the things that you should run in this deck, there's a, an engine that you should always run, which involves the uh, uh, Sun Goku Adventure Begins and the four star balls. Uh, now we run four four star balls and uh, four of the Kid Kus. Now you can obviously run as many four star balls as you want. Um, I've seen a lot of, I've been watching a lot of um, just YouTube videos of people playing this, this deck. A lot of people say that five is kind of the sweet spot. Uh, so I may end up, you know, if I end up running this deck you know, in, in set 10, I may end up purchasing a 10th, you know, a, um, not a 10th, <laughs> a, a fifth four star ball. So what, what you do uh, when you play this card for one, you get to search your deck or your drop area for a four star ball. And uh, that's kind of the whole premise of the deck is you basically play this, search this out, use it next turn, do, do the same thing. Um, if you have to pitch a card, you pitch this card at the drop for, you know, hand destruction or for just for anything like a combo. You can just use your Sun Goku to then pull it back. Uh, you can tap two, and if your leader is black, you can choose one skillless card with an energy cost of three or less from your deck or your drop area and play it, then shuffle your deck. Um, <clears throat> this is really good, um, considering we want to have a skillless card in our drop area so we can awaken at six. And I have uh, a few ways to be able to do that outside of just using this card. Um, now, obviously, the four star ball has two different effects. For one, it's a free 5k combo. But if you combo on top of a skillless card, it gains an extra 5k, so it becomes a 10k combo. So we run four and four of those. Uh, and I run two Bonds of Friendship Android 8. Um, Aider is sort of a, an old archetype <clears throat> with this card. I don't know how useful it is now. When you play this card, you can search the top seven for a skillless, add it to your, uh, add it to your hand and shuffle. And then when a Sun Goku Childhood dies from a skill, uh, or leaves the battle area um, by an opponent skill. Um, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards and KO it. 
So basically, I play this. Um, someone, someone coolers, you know, negs this, negs the other one. Um, his auto will go off because you know Goku will be killed or removed from the battle area uh, by a skill. I think that's how it works. Uh, you basically KO the cooler. Um, if they Beerus and they come down, they they Beerus and they kill the Goku. This is down the field. You basically can just KO that Beerus. You see kind of what I'm going here with. Um, this is a really good card. Um, I run out of a two of because we have ways to be able to pull it back into the deck and deck space is really tight. And I don't really, I want to run as little as black as possible. Make room for the green. Uh, but the black cards that I do run are pretty, pretty, pretty important to the deck. So we've got two of those. Um, I have four super combos. Um, I like this one. Obviously sparking, we, you know, we, we should, we're, we're going to be filling up our drop area anyways. Um... So you'll be able to draw from it, but it's just an, it's just a 10k combo regardless. So even if you don't have a drop area or you've overwhelmed and you you know you don't have a drop area to activate sparking, at least you have the ability to gain 10k. Um, so it's fine for those. Here's where the deck starts to change up a little bit in my own little spice. Then we run four universe two assembles. Um, You've probably heard me say this a lot in my videos. I love um, cards that allow you to draw that are not Goku apes. Um, I said in, a, in another deck profile, probably in a few different ones, that there are a multitude of cards, probably four or five cards now, that allow you to draw um, without having to pay for the Goku apes. You know, Goku apes are $140 They're just as expensive, if not, if not more expensive than most secret rares in the game. It's way blown out of proportion. The card, it doesn't need to be that much. Um, and for a person who's coming into the game, they see that and they go, wow, I have to spend $140 on each one of these cards. And most people are running three or four of them. I, I, I don't want to play. This gives you some encouragement, or hopefully it does give you some encouragement to be able to run other things other than those stupid Goku apes. So this card here, it's a tap one, draw one. That's awesome. Also, we get to choose a universe two card in our deck, place in the drop area, and shuffle. This is very good because a lot of the maidens play from the drop area, as well as uh, it gives us a way to self-awaken. What do you mean? How, how does that give us a way to self-awaken? So we run the Vanilla Gimes. We run uh, four of them. So since he has a skillless, we can use Universe 2, Assemble, draw one. Oop. Go down here a little bit. So we use Universe 2, Assemble to draw one. And then we put a Universe 2 card in the drop area. We can just pull this completely and just put it in the drop area. Now this gives us our requirement for self-awakening at six life. Um, pretty awesome. We run four of those, and those are the only skillless cards we run in the deck. I don't run the uh, the, the three drop uh, Nari Nari Rama, which is the um, the black 30k that came out in drop box five. Um, it has zero combo power, so it's in my opinion it's pretty useless. Um, I, I think this one's just better, um, at least for this deck. Um, I, th I think you can run it if you're running a predominantly black deck. You probably would be fine. But this is just, I, I just love the fact that, you know, yeah, I can run these and just help self-awaken and I have the Universe 2 card to help me pull this to my drop area and then I can just instantly awaken at 6 life. I don't really have to worry about trying to find them. Unless they're all in my life, which definitely happened. Um, another target for Universe 2 Assemble is the Rebranya. This card here is um, very important to this deck. Um, gives us a slight hand control advantage. When you play this card, your opponent chooses two cards in their hand and place them in the drop area. Um, obviously, if they have three cards in their hand, if you play two of these, they can only drop two. They, they, they can't, they have to choose two. It doesn't say up two, so they have to choose two. So uh, you kind of want to be careful. I have some, I have another card in the deck that I run that kind of counteracts um, having to play this. Maybe I didn't put it in here. Um, so this is the other card that I run in the side deck. Um, I run two of these in the side deck. And what this card does, this also acts as a good four drop to have. Uh, you'll see why later on in the deck. 
Uh, but re uh, Rebrand, Boundless Heart, when you play this card, choose one of your opponent's battle cards, ignoring barrier and KO it. So it's really good. Um, I just, I, I put them in the side deck, um, the permanent side deck basically for this deck, just cause this is just a better card to have. Um, it also has the effect of whenever this card dies, you can pull a three drop or less uh, green battle card from your drop area. So we actually can, we actually can pull out the uh, skillless Gimez um, and uh, there's one other card in this deck that we can pull out as well that just allows us to continue to have a board presence. So we run four of those. We run um, three of the Goku Blacks, Delicate Plan from Draft Fox 4. Uh, another card that I just absolutely love. <laughs> I love this card. Um, so it's active battle, you can play it out for two. Uh, and you can KO one of your opponent's battle cards two or less, which is uh, pretty cool. Is it two or less? Or one or less? Should be two or less. Yeah. I don't know why I thought it was one or less. Uh, so you can kill it. You can basically pay two, play this card, and then you can KO a card two or less. You can activate its main for three, choose up to one green Zamasu in your hand with a five cost or, or more. Uh, play it, and at the start of your opponent's next turn, you restand one energy. And course we do run a Zamasu target so we run the seven drop which when you play this you choose two of your opponent's battle cards or two of your opponent's cards in their hand and place them in the drop area this card is double strike 25k and it's indestructible very hard to get rid of um i thought about running a third one but it just doesn't feel too good this is sort of like a sub like like a like a sub b um engine just to give us some ability to um give us some more hand destruction and also just give us another thing to play for because once we get one of these on the board unless they're playing red uh they can neg this card um most cards cannot get rid of this uh still so which is which is nice so it just gives us a really big body we can throw on the board and just swing at stuff as we're trying to swing with our 30k skillless cards one zerloin uh you know the deal this card is amazing um, should be way more than what it is right now, but once competitive starts up, if green is dominating, which I think it will, um, to some extent, I think this card will go up. This is, in my opinion, a, this is, this card is a 10, a 10, $15 card value wise, I think. Uh, so when you play this card, you get to choose one green card in your hand for or less and play it. So you get to play out another battle card for or less for free with their skills active. So if they have an on play, if they have an on play auto skill, Skill goes off. So for the Rebranya, for instance, we play Rebranya. Um, our opponent has to discard two, just just for playing it. If you play the Rebrian, you get the KO card ignoring barrier. Um, it just it's so helpful. It just brings out. It just gives you so much utility. It's a 30k. It, it's it. There's only two cards in the game right now that can hit this. Uh, three cards in the game that can hit it. Um, in a sense of making it useless, which is, you know, Royal Condemnation, just puts it at the bottom of the deck. Um, Hit can return it to the hand, um, and Frost Deadly Poison. But if you, you're going to Frost Deadly Poison this, I, I mean, you know, you're, you either have multiple of them in your hand, or you're not really, you know, you don't really know how to use Frost Deadly Poison. I don't think this is a good Frost Deadly Poison target, but... So, um, the auto, you can KO this card, and when one of your opponent's cards attacks, so this will work for units and cards, this works for leaders and battle cards... Your opponent can attack with battle cards for the turn. Not that they can attack with one more. They, they don't get to attack anymore. So if they swing with lead, you just KO this card. Your opponent can attack with any of their battle cards. Um, can basically stop a turn. Uh, now the auto, the, the second auto, when this card is removed from your battle area by an opponent's skill or KO'd. Um, so when you KO this card, uh, that effect will go in. Um, you choose up to one of your battle cards in the drop area for or less play it with the skills negated for the turn now, obviously Rebranya wouldn't be a great target for that but you know what target is really good for that that uh we'll just point out here uh this it's a great target you basically can recycle this card back onto the field and then you can activate three and play out as a mouse if you have it from your hand it just gives you another battle card on the board um awesome card and it's a 30k so great you can also play this card out and then play out the skillless 30k and just swing with two 30 keys um two 30 k's um yeah just a good card um another target for 
uh, Zerloin, probably my favorite target, is Piccolo Summoning Ability. Um, love this card. I am uh, so glad I bought them when they went down in price before the uh, whole Corona thing started happening. Uh, they went down. I, I bought all of them. I bought four of them for um, under like $13, $14 a card. $15 a card around that. Um, pretty, pretty awesome. So what this card does, it's Barrier for one, which is great. 20k Barrier. Bond 2. So if you play it out with Zerloin, um, you automatically have Bond 2 requirement. Activate battle. You can pick one of your opponent's battle cards, uh, five or less, and KO it, and you draw a card. And that's once per turn on both offense and defense. It's just active battle. Um, so as soon as active battle starts, you, like if they swing with the leader, uh, you just activate battle, KO their battle card, draw. <laughs> it, it's it's really really strong. Um, not really much else to say. Two I think is fine. Uh, it's also a 5k combo as well, so it's never really dead. Um, maybe would fit the other two in the sideboard. This this card here, I think it works. It's kind of weird. So Shinron Figure of Majesty. So uh, the Shinron card has been played in lots of different black decks. And what this card does, um, when you play it, if you have Sparking Five, you, and this is at once per turn, you choose a card or you draw a card, and then you can either resand two energy. You can uh, give your leader or a battle card 5k crit. So I can give one of my skillless 30ks 5k and crit. So it becomes a 35k crit. Um, you can give um, Zerloin 5k and crit. But what's nice is you can play a battle card two or less from your drop area. And it doesn't say a specific color. It just says choose a battle card. Uh, so obviously, you know, this is a target. Uh, this is a target. Um, you can pull back your super combos because this super combo does not say when you combo it from your hand, it just says when you combo it. Um, so you have that. Um, what else do we have in this deck? I think that's it so far. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Um, I like that effect, just being able to pull back these cards. Um, it's it's really strong. <laughs> um, I, I it's kind of a weird a weird card to run in the deck. I know, uh, but being able to give stuff 5k and create, I think is really strong. And just being able to draw once per turn, making them have to target this card to remove it, um, is is, is nice. Uh, there's some tech cards that um, I'm not going to show off in this video. I may um, do another video about it, or maybe I'll start a Patreon, put some content on there. I don't know. Um, but I have, a, I have a tech card that I'll, I'll show off later, maybe in a tournament or something, that uh, it's really interesting that it works with. Um, but I won't go into too much more of that. But So I, I run two of these in, this, um, in the main. Um, I think it's plenty. The, uh, the turn four engine is uh, Maiden Transformation. This allows me to play out two Maidens, five or, uh, four or less, from my drop area and play them uh, with their skills obviously active. So... Obviously, the main uh, the main target in this deck is going to be playing out two of the Vibranias, make them pitch four, or I can play out one of each, or play out two Gimes. Um, or if I have my if I've obviously gone into, gone to my sideboard, I can play out the four drop Rebrian as well. Um, this gives you value, being able to play out basically eight energy worth of cards if I'm playing out two of these for four energy, and then I make them pitch four cards from their hand, or I can play out two Skillless or one of each. Um, just gives me a little for a little bit of variety just figuring out how the game is going you have two of them in the main board uh, one on the side um, this card here was a interesting addition so hasty dispatch dispo um, I did not put this I don't believe I put this in my rare video that I talked about I may have it was a while ago but um this card flew up from 20 cents which is where I bought them to almost ten dollars a lot of this has to do with how strong one drops are going to be for the Frieza archetype in set 10. And what this card does is when this card's, um, if there's no battle cards in your, in your, uh, there's no card in your battle area, no cards. Um, so field spells obviously are in your battle area, so it wouldn't count if you had field spells. Uh, you send this card from your drop to your warp, choose it to one battle card with an energy cost of one, play it with its skills negated for the turn. So this allows you to get back Kid Ku in this deck, and that's kind of it right now. Um, it, it's it, it's really just to get Kiku back, so I basically run a total of six Kikus. Um I know people now, I think people are, should be 
privy to how kid cues are used, being able to just add value to your, to your hand consistently. It works as a second version of a power burst, basically. Um, if my board gets completely wiped and I just need to start somewhere, and I don't have a kid coup in my hand, I can just pitch this from the from the from the drop area. So it's a free 5k combo. And you pitch it to the drop area. I mean, pitch it from the drop area to the warp, and then you just put a, uh, a kid coup in play. And obviously, you can't use its effects that turn, but you can at least get it on board and um, can continue moving forward. So I got two of those. Um, one demonic absorption since we're running black. Uh, choose a 20 of your opponent's battle cards, ignoring barrier, and send it to the warp. This is just to give me some uh, extra board clear. Oh yeah, and it's a 5k combo. If you didn't know, you activate battle. You can pay this. You can play this card without having to use its energy cost, and it becomes a 5k combo. Does, you don't get the active main effect, but that's okay. Uh, four power bursts. Grab it. Um, sparking effect as well. Uh, choose one black card in your drop barrier or warp. Uh, energy cost of one added to your hand, so we basically can grab back our kid coos. So this gives us an extra four kid coos. Lots of kid coos. Uh, two rebrands. Now, um, the first effect of this card, your leader has to be green. Uh, which is, if this card's in rest mode, this card basically gains like Omega Deadly Defender, so they can only attack this card. Um, but everything else doesn't need to have a green leader for it, so that's fine. You play this card uh, from your hand, you choose all your opponent's battle cards, ignoring barrier, and KO them. And when this card dies, you choose a four drop or less green from your drop area and play it. So obviously we can play back the Piccolo, we can play back Rebranya, Rebran, the Gimez, and the Super Saiyan Rose Goku Black. They're all different targets. And it's triple strike, so this is a good way to end the game. Just clear a board and swing. Uh, I run the combination of one for the Destruction Champa and one with the dark banisher this is the main combo i want to use this card for so if my opponent has a weird board or they have, if i know they have a lot of counter plays um you play this card you swing three times you give it double strike one of those times uh what's nice about this card is that when your opponent activates a skill they have to choose a card in their hand and warp so if they activate a super combo ability they have to warp one if they negate they have to warp one if they activate a battle card ability they have to warp one just gives you some very interesting hand and control ability and yeah it's great also since you have so many four star balls um i've had there's a game i had uh, i had three uh three kid cues on the board and i threw i threw this down uh swung we stood um used a used a four star ball to make it 30 swung again oh no um used used one of the kid cues pulled the four star ball back and i just kept recycling that same ball so I got to the last swing, threw down this, ended up comboing like a hundred and it was like a hundred and five k on top of this card. So it just it was it's it's pretty funny. But we only run one since we don't do a lot of overwhelm stuff. Anyways, this is sort of a last resort. Our main win condition is using the black smoke dragon. Um, we want to throw this card down and then just rip our opponent's hand or their board and then just use one of our. Um, you know, skills cards to just kind of finish the job. Uh, deck seems to run pretty smooth. Uh, doesn't have trouble drawing. Doesn't have trouble with hand control. Um, my my issue would probably be aggression at the moment. Being able to just set up um, and get you know get a kid coup out, get a skills card out. It's probably the biggest issue. But we'll see going forward in the set ten what what some other things that I can add to it and kind of change up a little bit. This is my kid coup maidens deck. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, like and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next video.